everybody, welcome back to the Audu Cycling Podcast. Today, giving you a preview of Volta Catalunya. Starts Monday, and I guess the most interesting part is that there's no massive names here. No Roglic, no Pogacar, Wout, Van der Poel, Alaphilippe, you know, nobody's, none of them. Which is going to make it a bit more of a an open race. And uh, I think that'll be more interesting for us as viewers. Of course, this will be YouTube and YouTube and just regular podcasting. We're trying to get to a thousand so we can live stream the tour. So if you're here and you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. Just for the hell of it. But heck, we're going to keep creating content and hopefully we just get there naturally anyway. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to happen. I think it'll happen. We're actually doing all right. Yeah, we don't have to push it. It'll come with time. You know, if you're coming back, like, you know, I hope hope it's, you know, useful, informative. Or just just good listening. Or just good listening. Maybe it's funny. I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll just go stage one. Now, my Spanish isn't great. Someone's going to make it up. It's from Kaya to Kaya. I think it's something like that. Fair one. Um, I fell asleep in this stage has been used before. I think it was... Because, of course, this race didn't happen last year. Um, but it did in 2019. I think this is a stage which Thomas de Ghent won two years ago. Bloody um, hell. I think. Um, I from might a break. be wrong. Yeah, from a breakaway. Mm. By, like, three minutes. And then he tried to hold on to GC after that. Um... Well, what I kind of see from this is that there's very few opportunities for sprinters in this race. I had to consider that this could be, but I think more than likely this could be a breakaway stage. Mm-hmm. More than likely, just because of the nature of the descent to the... Like, it's a descent from kilometre 131 to kilometre 100... What's that, like, 150? Which just means that the breakaway and the peloton won't be that. Like we won't be swapping times overly, so I've, and then it's only like twenty k's to the line. I think that a break could make this, um, but a, on the contrary, a sprint could happen as well if sprinters' teams are keen enough. But again, there's not very many sprinters here, so it's going to take quite a bit of motivation and effort to keep this under control. Yeah, like the caliber of sprinters that are here. Yeah, is like low. Sargon. Yeah. Milano, Orensman, Cantor, Mayus, Van Rensburg, Impey, Dion Smith. Like, that's kind of... <laughs> yeah, it's not great. It's more punchers. Yeah. More than anything. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, some people could end up getting stage wins who don't normally get stage wins. Yeah. I mean... But I could imagine yeah. it being like a... Imagine, so, there's a, let's say a versatile sprinter gets in this break. Yeah. This hypothetical break. You know, and then he could win from the breakaway. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm kind of imagining. Because why would a GC team, they might police it a little bit, not let anyone in who's kind of a danger. Yeah, like a Hershey. Yeah, because then he could maybe hang in mm. on GC later yeah. on and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm seeing like a, you know, if you're a, I don't know, would Sargon be, a, I guess Sargon maybe. I reckon somebody from Trek will be in there. Um, You know, maybe... Like an AG2R guy, maybe like Mohoric, somebody like that. Yeah, agreed. Um, I mean, let's also, who do you think? Who are you thinking for stage one? It's it's pretty just like, it goes up and then it goes down. If you're interested, anybody who's out there on the, just, just go on Pro Cycling Stats and look up stages. Like, a couple of names, like a De Gent usually goes well here, but he hasn't looked great as of recent. I'm going to say, I want to say Daryl Impey. You know what? I was going to say that. Yeah, just because I've seen that he's been training with Froome. He looks keen. And, you know, I imagine he's strong enough to be in a break and then actually yeah. execute a finish. Yeah, I mean, that's a really that's a really good shot on this one that I was thinking of saying. Mm. But, yeah. You can go over as well. Like, I think it's good to go with somebody else. Um, I'm kind of just... I think Mohoric looked decent in Milan San Remo today. I think he finished 11th in that front group. So I think I'm going to go with Mohoric. Hmm. I, also, I also think that this could be a good stage for 
potentially someone who might finish, say, 20th on GC. Yeah. Maybe someone like James Knox or something. Yeah. To then actually get in this break and maybe gain three minutes. So yeah. then he's got almost like a little head start. You know, someone who's basically a crap GC guy. Yeah. But who could end up actually finishing 10th overall rather than 20th because of this jump jump start. Yeah. Um, that's why I kind of thought. Yeah. Stage two, time trial day. It's a actual decent length, 19 kilometers. It's not flat by any means. Um, you know, we go from, you know, 100 and... I was a climb, which goes at 150, climbs up to... Probably like over to like two fifty, so there's some decent amount of climbing in this, which will favour. You know, it means that the pure climbers might not lose an overly huge amount of time, but there's a massive main road section, which is the uh, kind of flat bit from kilometre ten through to kilometre sixteen, and that's just pretty much just flat and open. So that will favour more of a powerhouse kind of kind of rider. In terms of time trialists who are here. Um, there's not, uh, I mean, there's like Rowan Dennis, of course. There's Cavagna, who I think will be really eager to um, get a time trial victory after he was so close at Paris Nice. I think he's going to be really um, wanting something. Josef Scherny, again from De Kernick. <laughs> Jao Almeida, again from De Kernick, looked good about final time trial at Torino. He finished, I think he was ahead of Casper Asgreen on that, and with the additional climbing that'll suit Jao. Down to the ground. Leonard Kemner, uh, Kelderman, McNulty um, puts in a really good time trial uh, very often. Then you got, you know, like G's here as well. He usually puts in a, a good shift. Hugh Carthy did good at the time trial at the Vuelta last year, so I don't think we can especially write him off. But again, again, depends. He can use, he, he, he could just pull out some form. And just go really hard. You just don't know when he's going to peak. That's the only uh, the only issue. Bob Jungles didn't look great in Paris Nice. Um, I haven't put Joe Roscoff. Yeah. Off, whatever. Because you can I reckon, rally. He, why could no. he not get a top ten? No reason. Um, I think that's about. I also, I also put like potential like GC gainers. Don't know if that can catch yeah. on. Zhao, Tom, Absolutely. Geraint Thomas, yep. McNulty, and do you know what? I even put for him with a question wow. mark. Because, wow. you know, why couldn't he do all right on a time trial like this? Exactly. I guess so. I think, um, you know, how are Jumbo Visma going to play this? At the end of the day, Krauschweg looked pretty good at Paranis on the time trial. Um, finished like 11th or something like yeah, that. It's Krauschweg, isn't it? It's just yeah. crap. You know, they've got they've got a really good team here, but they're going to... I think it's going to be quite difficult for them Serp. To... Serpikus. All the way. Talk about that in a minute, eh? Mr. Altitude Man. Yeah. I mean, who do you think is going to win this time trial then? Oh. Tricky. Huh? I I I see the argument for Cavagna. Yeah. And his motivation will be high. But I honestly think that Zhao will win it. Do you? Just because, like you've mentioned, like the slight, the slight hilly terrain... Mm. And then he's not going to lose much anywhere else. Yeah. I, he's super fast, even when it's flat. We saw that with UAE as well. Mm. Like he's, he's just fast at time trialing, despite being and he's like got the, 63 he's got kilos. specialised, which is... Yeah, it's just a just fast the bike. fastest bike. Or it is. Close to. Um, you're going with Zhao. I'll go with another young guy. I'll go with McNulty. I think those time trials at the Giro showed that he can do in a really good time trial. And after leaving Paris Nice early... He's going to be pretty eager to show something, mm. especially with the UAE team, which looks kind of, uh, I don't know. A bit, Sparse. Uh, yeah, but, uh, it's, a, it's lacking focus. Mm. Well, it always we're not, does. We're not really too sure what's going on. Well, that's just them, isn't it? Well, yeah, I guess so. Unless they've got Pog in which case you're like, oh, we're working for Pog. Then it's just a bit like, whoa, what's, what's going on here? Um, and of course, you know, Hershey's first race for the team this year. How's he doing? Is he in good form? Like, I'd, I'm just not sure what to expect from Hershey here. Because I'm not sure if he's good enough on GC to hang on with the likes of, you know, Adam Yates, Carapaz, Zhao on stage three and four. You know, it's just a weird one. Speaking of stage three and stage four, let's 
it's gone to these. So this is a, it goes up, Val, Valter 2000. What a very interesting name. <laughs> I, I don't know who's called it that. Um, obviously, hint in the name, it's over 2000 meters. It's 11.4 kilometers at 7.5%. So that is a hard climb. It pretty much just goes steadily uphill throughout the whole stage. And then it's just uphill to the finish. So, we're looking at climbers here, obviously. Uh, stage 3 and Stage 4 are going to be the main GC days. I'm looking around, I'm seeing... I'm going to just mention like the main people first. Almeida, uh, Sepkus, Adam Yates, Carapaz. Who else have we got? Simon Yates. Simon Yates, Hugh Carthy. Garrett Thomas. Garrett Thomas. Um, mm, Jai Hindley. Jai Hindley. Hugh Carthy. Iran. Yeah. Quintana. Mass. <sighs> Maybe. Rauschberg. Chris. Ha- oh, no, it's not Chris Hamilton. Yeah. Chris who's, Hamilton. who's Hamilton guy? Lucas Hamilton. Lucas Hamilton, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think those are all the names. I think if anybody else won, apart from those guys, I'd be quite surprised. Lots of names that we just spurted out there. Um, I think we saw from Simon Yates. I think we'll just start there. Simon Yates at Torino looked good, considering that Pogacar went early and Yates actually closed the time on him, I think, overall on that climb. Yeah, I know, but that was just one stage. It was. For the for the actual duration of the race, he was, he was a bit flat, wasn't he? He was a bit flat, but I feel that he's left Torino. I mean, he lost time on that uphill, slightly uphill finish where Bernal lost time. And I think overall Yates looked good, especially on the uphill finish. And I think that will favour him here. I think that he could be surprisingly good. I think he's coming here because he wants more. He want, he was going to go to Tour of the Alps, but he's coming here instead. Hoping afterwards he'll go to the Giro. So he's... I, I think that he looked good at Torino, so I'm not counting him out. Swap over to the other Yates, Adam Yates, after doing the UAE Tour, where he looked like the only person who could actually ch- challenge Pog at anything. I think he's got to be one of the favourites not just for this stage but for GC I just feel like with that he might be in a position where he's the best yeah but Ineos have got like, they're confused they don't know oh, yeah. what gender they are they're just um, <laughs> <laughs> they've got like five GC guys or something ridiculous yep. who have they got G Carapaz Yates. Adam Yates Port Port <sighs> My God. that's four guys and the tricky thing is, I feel, I'm not sure about G, to be honest with you. I just feel that he d- he's not winning because of the way that he looked at Torino, hmm. quite frankly. I think that their best bet is Carapaz and Yates. Carapaz is a bit unknown because he hasn't raced this year. Um, so that's just a bit up in the air. And Yates, of course, we saw how he was at UAE. And he's just really good at one-week stage races. True. Yes. Um, so I think that the Yates is just in general that's the nice dynamic to finally have them against each other mm. whether that would improve cohesion <laughs> maybe I, I think two other people you got to mention is Sepkus Absolutely. and McNulty right because they both they're both from Altitude yeah and I know that's everyone lives at Altitude now but they're actually yeah. like from there McNulty's trained at Altitude for like the all of that pre-season. Yeah. And I just wonder whether, you know, McNulty showed himself not to be that great um, with these summit finishes, but since the summit finish is so high, perhaps that could be different this time around. Yeah. I think some... Yeah. I think McNulty won't win this stage, but certainly will need to do well if he's aiming for GC. We haven't mentioned Zhao for this finish, but I don't think that Zhao will be winning it. I just I like Zhao, but I just I'm not sure about his chance of winning this. I think he could definitely finish top five. I don't think Zhao is patient enough for a high altitude finish. Yeah. And I imagine 
he will get greedy. Yeah. Hit out early, go into the red, and he can't get it back. And yeah. he'll just roll in like 20 seconds. True. Wow. <laughs> but for me, um, my guy for this, I'm torn between Cuss or Carapaz. Even though Carapaz yeah. hasn't raced, like you say. Yeah. But my heart's telling me Cuss. Is it? I want Cuss to win. I mean, Hugh Carthy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Big old gangly. Don't know. He won't up the angle. Um, I'm going to go with Adam Yates. Mm-hmm. I'm just feeling that he could definitely win this race. I guess stage four is very similar to what we've just said, really. A bit like when we do sprint stages and they're just like, oh, it's flat again, therefore what's going to happen? I guess the only different dynamic is that people know where people stand at this point. There's a bit of an order. People know what people were like the day before, so are people going to do it a bit differently? Will people go in the break? Would the GC leader be happy letting a breakaway go to try and contest it? I think that there's going to be... It's tricky to say if it's going to be two back-to-back GC days, but I think that it will be, just because of the nature of it. Um, you know, And the it, nature of the following days. Yeah, the fact that the following days are more than likely going to be a breakaway day and a sprint day, this just means that it's going to be a GC day, because otherwise the only difference that you can make is on the final circuit day, which has been shown to make differences in the past, but this is your big chance. Of course, we've said the names that we said yesterday. I mean, not yesterday, just now. <laughs> For the day before. Um, again, it's like the percentage is a bit lower, 6.7%, but it's a it's a proper brute of the day, more hilly terrain, all in all, climbs earlier. Um, you know, will somebody who attacks earlier, is that a benefit? I know it's like, oh, they're a minute 40 down on GC, therefore I can afford to give them a bit of leeway. You know, I'm not sure if, at the end of the day, it's just a hard climb. And if you attack early, it's like, I think it's just whoever's got the best legs wins, really. It's not really a matter of strategy or trying to be clever. I think that maybe the, what you could think is, okay, let's say hypothetically Adam Yates is in the leader's jersey, therefore they might send Carapaz on the attack or like to draw somebody out something like that hmm. like Ineos might do that or they might just ride really defensively and kind of a bit boring and just put or they could put Port in the break or something yeah that'd be fun <laughs> that would be pretty fun put G in the break oh my god imagine no way G knows how to ride in a breakaway <laughs> <laughs> that's just completely unorthodox for them um I mean is it, is it any different to the day before do you think I think it's more repeated efforts you know, yeah. what is it like? I'm just trying to think how many hours they're spending at like threshold or something. Yeah. Are you picking somebody different? Are you picking? Are you not picking Sepkus here? I think it's a different kind of climb. It's not quite as steep. Yeah. I know it's it finishes just below two thousand meters, but it's not quite as high. Yeah. I'm going to go for my other guy. I'm going to go for Carapaz on this one. I'm going to go with Simon Yates. This one. Both the aces. I'm going to go with, yeah, Adam Yates stage three and Simon Yates stage four. Very nice. I don't know. I think that's just a bit... I don't know. I'd see the Yates is doing really well here and kind of throwing it down. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just like watching racing. I'll take whatever. That's true. And we're just excited about this. <laughs> it's not just going to be like all the top guys here there's actually like this is good because we're not just oh Pogacar's going to win it's actually a bit of uh, you have to think about it stage five breakaway I think so rolly rolly day hard hard day still it's the trick to finding a breakaway stage is that is it too hard for the sprinters yes because of that hill at the end is it too easy for the brute, for the GC guys? Yes. Therefore, it's perfect breakaway territory because it fits between the two. So it just falls between the, you know, very few people are motivated to bring it back kind of category. Mm. Equally, so, I feel like that end climb, although it's not hard enough for like a proper GC battle, yeah, 
it could be as this would probably be the last chance it could be where moves fly off 7.5k at 6.7 percent yeah pretty looks pretty consistent but you know it could be somewhere you know where someone like Zhao attacks he's five minutes down or something Oh, absolutely. And he attacks and tries to get a podium spot and then he just has to solo yeah. 25k after or something. I consider this to perhaps be too hard of a... I think this would be too hard for the likes of a Daryl Impey, mm. personally. Mm-hmm. I think that well, I think this is, has got Hershey all over it. I think, yeah, I think this has definitely got Hershey written all over it. That was going to be the first name I mentioned. Um, Hershey absolutely has to come into this race and I think do something. Otherwise, UAE will be like, what the hell? Mm. Like, he's postponed this, the start of his season for a long time now due to whatever non-disclosure agreements and all that, you know, political drama going on. I think he's got to come in and make an impression. If he doesn't, it's going to be a bit, it's going to put a bit of a bad taste in the sponsor's mouths. So I think that Hershey ideally would come away with a stage win here to prove that he's... You know, been worth the hassle. And equally, you know, it's not just pressure on him; it's pressure on the team. Yeah. To do that, like the team will will hopefully work, <clears throat> like with him to get the stage. When it's not going to be like, okay, Hershey, today you go, you go win stage. Yeah. So, oh no, no, we'll help you do it. I reckon they'll probably send maybe a Davidilla Cruz with him, possibly, or a Dombrowski, mm. something like that to help set him up. Other breakaway hopefuls. Um, it really depends on who's lost time, which of course we don't know. But um, you know, I think maybe Quick Step after having such a, I feel like maybe they're going to be a bit. They could be a bit knackered because they've got a bit of a mountain train. I feel that maybe they've used mm. up a lot of energy well, there. What about like? All right, let me throw a few names, like Lucas Hamilton. I don't know, I feel like he might be quite high up on GC to be All right. allowed. Rob Power. Yeah. No, is that his name? Yeah, Rob Power from Quebec Rassos. Yeah. Yep. That guy. Yep. I imagine he could be strong enough to be in this move and yep. far enough down on that GC. Um. What about like oh, Ruben Guerrero? Yeah. For EF Nippo. What about Mr. Lit? Mr. Luis Leon Sanchez? Obviously. Has to be in there. Yep. I'm going to throw a name out here that you probably haven't heard of. Um, Matthias Skelmos Jensen. He is rides. he ride for Bora? No. Is he Is he Danish? He is Danish. He is rides he... for Trek Segafredo. Yeah, yeah, he's like 20 years old. He's 20 years old. He finished 6th in GC at the UAE Tour, which I know has a large... Is in large part due to the fact that he was in that winning split on stage 1. But you've got to be in the split, man. But, you know, he also finished just fairly, like, in the top 20 on both of those Mountains top finishes. And I'm like, you know, I just think that's a bit of a really <laughs> out there name, which could just poof, do well. Hmm. I don't know, just a, just a weird one. Uh, it's going to be hard for him to win, of course, because it depends who he's with. I think I'm looking at lots to dial. I'm seeing a lot of the names that we put in our Christmas countdown. I'm seeing Andreas Krohn, Sylvan Monique, and Maxine Van Gils. Unfortunately, we haven't really seen too much from them. We've seen a bit of Krohn, but Van Gils and Monique, just haven't seen lots of them. All I've seen from Monique is that he's DNF'd races. Van Gils hasn't even made his debut yet, which could be a bit more promising. But the only problem with them is that I just... I want to believe that they're going to do well, but I'm just not sure if this is the season where they're going to do it. I'm just not sure if they're established enough, and especially if you're a Neo Pro and you haven't raced this year and you don't know what the Pro Peloton's like. Like, it's just a different speed to under 23. It's just... (laughs) It'll just be a matter of they just get through it, in my opinion. Mm. Just because there's no way you're going to come in and be like, oh, this is actually really easy. Oh, I'm just going to go on the breakaway. Oh, I'm going to win. Mm. Well, it's just... They're just old school development riders aren't they yeah it's like they're they're gonna be good when they're like 26 yeah exactly not when they're 19 yeah um Cavania could go in the break but that climb's a bit hard for him I know I said that just now but oh there's no way Dakota could go in it they could do um but yeah I think yeah Hershey what about 
Bora. Depends if Kamner's maybe lost time on GC. I think maybe those climbs are too difficult. Kamner could go in the break. Mm-hmm. I think that last climb is um, okay for him. Um, Astana, like you said, Sanchez, Guerrero, we've seen anybody else, Atia Valta, <laughs> the Hungarian, <laughs> or a, like, a Clement Champoussin for AG2R. He's like a fairly nice um, developing French climber who did like a top 20 GC at the Volta last year. Sne- sneaky outside bet there. Other than that, right, go on, put, a name, a, put a name down. I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to go with Gianluca Brambier. Oh yeah. Didn't even say his name throughout any of that, but I'm going to go with Brambier. I'm going with Mark Hershey. There we go. There we go. I'm glad that one of us went with Hershey because I feel that he is going to win a stage and I think this is the best shot. Stage six now. Stage six we think is more than likely going to be the best shot for a sprint stage. Other than the last stage? Nah, I think the, the last stage is way too hard, I think. It's, it's it's quite... I've seen the circuit for it, and it's um, it's quite difficult. There's a definite... I oh, just, right. Fair, fair, fair. I just thought it was like laps of, a, of Barcelona. Oh, no, it's pretty burgy. Oh, right, yeah, fair one. Okay. I think the stage five will be a sprint. Therefore, it's not... I mean, don't get me wrong, there's lumps and bumps in the way, but more than likely it's going to be the best shot for a sprint. And I think all the teams know that, and the only sprinters here will be keen for that to happen. Mm. So, um, should we go through the sprinters again? Who have we got? We've got Sargon, Max Cantor. Um, depends if maybe maybe they go with Mayus, Bora. Yeah, if maybe. go with Sargon. Uh, in, uh, Milano, Van Milano. Rensburg, MP, S- Dion Smith. Dion Smith. It's about, that's about it, isn't it? I'm saying MP. Milano. You're saying Milano? Yep. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a good shot. But Sagan did show himself to be a yeah. bit speedy today. Sagan looked good at Milan San Remo today. And he's not going to let Jordi Meus boss him around? <laughs> no. I'm going to go with Sagan because I think he looked good today. Cool. And then? S- and then stage seven, which is last time we came here, I think Davide Formolo one um from like a there's just like splits to happen going up and like all these climbs and it turns into different groups and it's a bit of a gc nightmare if you don't have a strong enough team and if you're in the leader's jersey so i'm expecting a bit of an ineos stranglehold on what was going on they won't be sending guys in moves they'll just be you know shut it down we're keeping our leader in the leader's jersey so that's what I'm expecting as an approach from Ineos. Or who are, and to be honest with you, I don't think that any other team could do that. Jumbo Visma have a good team here, but it's not strong enough. I think that they would get kind of torn apart. Same with De Kernic, Same with any other team other than Ineos here, quite frankly. Every other team is going to get kind of torn to shreds. I'm expecting lots of attacks from guys who are a bit far down. And I'm expecting more than likely either a solo victor like last time or... A small group of some like GC and mixing puncher guys in there as well. Um, so not a big group, probably maximum maximum twenty. Um, I'm expecting splits, and it's going to be a good stage to watch. So, considering that it's just such a a wide open circuit, and with you know lots of people who could win, you can pick a lot of people here. Um, I think you can pick most people other than probably the GC leader at the point. So I'm expecting Ineos to not win this stage, quite frankly. Um, but I'm expecting attacks from the likes of, you know, a Simon Yates maybe if he's down, or like a Zhao. Like this is Zhao written all over it, this circuit. Do you know who else I think is gotten written all over? Who? Chicone. I think, oh, nice. Chikoni, Hershey, maybe again. Maybe. I'm just having one breakaway day, rest of the sprint. Sprint and then go have a breakaway again. Yeah. I think Hershey, this isn't uh, mountainous enough where Hershey will get dropped, so he'll could just like hang with the GC guys and then out sprint him at the end. Very possible to happen. I think it's too hard for Sargon at the moment. He doesn't quite have the form 
Otherwise, I'd probably be saying Sargon. But I'm expecting De Koenig to throw uh, like a Masnada Nox in the break, something like that, and then Zhao to bridge up and gain a little bit of time on GC. So I think Zhao finishing like the front group, but I don't think that he's going to win. Um, in my eyes, I think that Hershey is going to win this last stage. I'm going to go with Ciccone. Ooh, what, like a solo attack, I'm guessing? Yeah. If he comes to line with Hershey, Hershey's winning. What do you think that what, Ciccone's going to start the day in like 12th <laughs> or something? Well, or- no, I think he'll be worse than that. Worse than that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think good. I think he'll it'll be GC guys yeah. attacking, and he'll still be there, mm-hmm. and then he'll just he'll just slip away in the madness on yeah. the last climb or something. Yeah, or he'll be in a a sneaky group, and then he'll just attack and counter, and they just look at each other. Yeah, I mean other names who could be in that. I think a, a Dazza could certainly hang on, going on around here. He could finish in the top ten. I think that he could definitely make it round. Um, but other than that, I, think I mean, maybe really... something like Mike Woods. Mike Woods, I didn't even really mention throughout the whole thing. Um, but yeah, Mike Woods could be allowed just to ping off mm. if he's far enough down, which I think he probably will be. So now we've covered all the stages. I guess it's what's next is to say who we think is going to win overall. A name. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Adam Yates. I think he's won. Hmm. I think he's got a solid enough TT to not lose too much time, and I think the uphill finishes will favour him. I think he's just a real good one week GC racer. Yeah. I'm 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 gonna go for Richard Carapaz. So we're going to Ineos, I think are winning. Yep. Either, either or. Yep. One way e- around or the other. Either or. Yeah. Certainly, but I think some notable performances, Cuss, Almeida, um, could be some surprise. I'm hoping that Cuss gets a bit of leadership, but it's uh, it's difficult to say. We'll just have to tune in and find out on so Monday through to Sunday. Check it out, Volta Catalunya. If you're interested in creating a Vela Games team for it, then go do that. We'll put a video up for that as well, probably tomorrow. And yeah. That's it. So we'll round by round this up here. Thanks for listening and keep your masks on. Stay safe and we'll talk to you next time. Salut!